Hey everybody, if you've been driving for very long, there's a good chance you've had this experience where you've walked out to get in your car and realized you've got a flat tire and now you're gonna be late to wherever you're going. You're maybe gonna have to get it towed. Maybe your spare is flat. There's all kinds of reasons why this can be a real bummer for your day. So in this video, I'm gonna show you just how easy it can be to repair a flat tire like this one. Let's get started. Here's the kit I'm gonna be using to repair this tire today. These are commonly available at your local department store or your local auto parts store. And if you're dealing with a flat tire that you're trying to repair right now, that's probably the fastest and easiest way to get a hold of one of these. Now, if you're watching this video and you don't currently have a flat tire, then I recommend you go ahead and get one of these anyway and stick it on the shelf in your garage. That way you'll be prepared. And I'll leave a link to a kit like this in the video description below that you can order online. So let's just quickly review all the parts that come in this kit. First off, you're gonna have these patches themselves. This kit comes with five, and they're kind of sandwiched between a couple of pieces of plastic because they are very, very sticky. So we'll peel back this plastic when we're ready to use the patch. Next is this reamer tool. This is used to clean out the hole where the puncture occurred and to get it to be a consistent size so those patches fit just perfectly. And lastly, you'll have the patch insertion tool. The patch itself is gonna get put in through this hole right here. You'll then put it into the tire and then when you pull this back out, that patch will slide through the gap that's right there at the very end of the tool. And then the patch will stay in the tire and seal up your hole. Now using this kit, you technically could perform the repair with the wheel still on the car, but I'm going to strongly recommend you go ahead and take the wheel off because it's gonna be far, far easier to both locate the exact source of your leak and to perform the repair with the tire off the car rather than still attached. Now I'm not gonna show you exactly how to do that in this video simply because there's such a wide variety of vehicles out there, but I will just tell you to consult your owner's manual to find the location of your car's jack and your car's tire iron, as well as the proper way to lift your car safely and to get the wheel and tire off. With the tire removed, the first thing I like to do is just inspect the tread to see if I can figure out exactly what's caused my leak. There's a few little pieces of rock and dirt and other debris in this tread, but I don't see any obvious signs of what could be causing the leak quite yet. Ah, looks like I've got a nail in the tire right in the center of the tread. Now, if you find it and it's obvious, you probably don't need to go any farther than this. But if you can't find exactly what's causing it, then what I recommend you do next is Add a little bit of air to the tire. You don't have to pump it all the way up, but make sure it's got at least a little bit of air pressure in it. And then you can spray the tire with some soapy water and just watch to see if bubbles appear. Anywhere the bubbles are coming out is where you've got a leak in the tire. You can only safely repair a puncture that is in the treads in the area shown here. If the puncture is outside of this area, especially if it's in the sidewall of the tire, then the tire cannot be repaired and must be replaced. Once you've located the leak and determined that it's in a safe area for a repair, remove the object that caused the puncture. Now, most often this object, like a nail or a screw, will still be in the tire and will require a bit of digging with some pliers or other tools to get it out. Sometimes, though, you'll find that the puncture has no obvious foreign object in it. In that case, dig around in the puncture a little bit to make sure that there's really nothing there, as sometimes the head of a nail or screw will break off, leaving the shaft in the tire, which can be a little bit hard to see. Just dig out whatever you can find in the puncture and then you can move on. So next we're gonna use the reaming tool that came in the tire repair kit to widen and open up that hole a little bit. Now one quick point of caution here. When I was pulling out the nail, I noticed that it came out perfectly perpendicular to the treads like this. So that's the way I'm gonna push the reaming tool in. If the nail had gone in at an angle like this or like this or off to the side like that, you'd wanna follow that hole the way the original obstruction was in the tire. And that's because if the hole was made at an angle like this, but then you push the reaming tool in straight like this, you'll actually make things worse. So we're going to push and twist this tool in until it goes all the way into the tire. Depending on the size of the original hole, this might require quite a bit of force. Ideally, you'll wanna push the reaming tool in and out a couple of times to help open up that hole. And don't be alarmed if you hear it making some noises, that's normal. You wanna work this reaming tool until it's relatively easy to pull in and out. That'll get the hole set up properly to receive the plug. 
With the hole all reamed out, we're ready now to uh, insert one of these patches. Now, I really recommend you wear gloves for this part. These patches are extremely sticky and they'll, they'll ruin your day, really. They get all over your hands and make things nasty. Now, you want to feed this patch through this hole in the insertion tool. This can be pretty difficult to do. I recommend you get kind of one little part started like that and then use a pair of needle nose pliers to reach through and pull the patch through. And don't worry if you kind of tear up the end of the patch a little bit. That's not the part that's going to actually seal the hole. It's the center part of the patch that we care about. Now, if you don't have a pair of needle nose pliers, you can use the reamer tool to shove the patch through as well, at least enough that you can get it started so that you can pull it the rest of the way through with your fingers. You want to get the patch kind of centered in the tool just about like that. Remember at the beginning I mentioned the rubber cement. This is when we're going to need it. We're going to use this to help lubricate the insertion point down here as well as the patch itself. There's kind of no such thing as using too much for this. This is going to help get this to go into the tire a lot easier and it'll help make sure it's sealed up properly. Okay, with lots and lots of rubber cement there, we're gonna use this tool. We're gonna push this patch in. Now we don't wanna push it all the way into the tire. We wanna push it in until we can feel that the patch center part is into the meat of the tire or into the center of the tire. This isn't quite far enough yet. There you go. You wanna push it in so you got a little tail sticking out about like that. With the patch pushed in that way, now just pull the insertion tool right back out and it should leave the patch in the tire just like that. As you can see, the patch is sticking out from the tread of the tire a fair bit. Now, believe it or not, that's perfectly okay. It will wear down as the car drives, but if you care about things being super neat, you can go ahead and trim that off. So I've trimmed this patch off so it looks a little neater, but again, you can leave it. It'll just wear down as the car drives. Now with this repair completed, I don't have any tire pressure left in this tire. So I'm gonna put a little bit of air in it and we'll check for leaks at this site where I've done the repair. If you're not sure how much air you should put into the tire, don't go by what's written on the sidewall of the tire. Instead, open the driver's door of your car and you should find a sticker somewhere in the door jam that will list the cold tire pressure. In this case, I already checked and it's 30 PSI, so that's what I'll fill this tire to. And there we go, that's right about 30. And with the tire reinflated to the proper pressure, we'll spray some soapy water on here again, just one more time. Make sure that there's no more leaks. I don't see any bubbles appearing at all, so this leak has been repaired. This tire can go back on the car. Well, that's gonna do it for this one. I hope you can see it's really not that hard of a job to repair a tire that's got a puncture in it. And if you've got the kit on hand, it really only just takes a few minutes. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed this video and maybe even learned a little something. If you did, you can let me know about that with the thumbs up button down below. If you wanna see more content like this about how to fix stuff around your house and take care of problems as they come up, save yourself a bunch of money, it's free and that's uh, the little subscribe button down there down below. And if you have any questions or comments, feedback, snide remarks, I'm up for all of it. That's down in comment land down below as well. I read everything that is put there and I respond to most. I look forward to seeing you there. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. And get the wheel off. You know, every time I record one of these, there's one little section of every single video that I've got to do like 20 takes on. Yeah, this is that section. To help get those patches to slide in a little easier. The hardest part of this patch repair kit is opening this rubber cement package, arg. Get out, get out now. There, see? That was easy.